here immediately after this news conference, we're partnering with the SNHP to make that happen. Uh, today's activity is largely to speak to the performance of the tourism industry. We've been having periodic news conferences with your body industry's performance. I dare say from 2013, the figures have been tremendous. We did even better in 2014, and we are happy to announce for you the figures for the first five months for 2015. I dare say they are also very, very <coughs> impressive. The head table needs no introduction. Uh, I begin with my immediate left, the NS Director of Tourism, Louis Lewis. Next to him is the Minister for Tourism, the Honorable Lon Theophilus, who is also the Minister for the Creative Industries. We are, of course, in the carnival season. And the Deputy Director, Tracy Warner Arnold, is also joining us. We like to go to focus on the industry's performance. The other topic for discussion would be a review of the just concluded 2015 St. Lucia Jazz and Arts Festival, the third year of the festival being rebranded in terms of the arts component. We made a number of structural changes in 2015 from the MPP to as well at, at the home at Pigeon Island. We'll tell you all about how some of these things work. We'll give you some of the feedback and of course media partners. We always recommend your own feedback as well. Having said that, I go straight into the Minister housekeeping matters. If your phone is not on vibrate, now is a good time to do so. I would never ask press members to turn off their phones. So vibrate everybody. And I now turn over to the Minister for Tourism, Heritage and the Creative Industries. Mr. Minister. Okay, thank you. Uh, I would like to once again welcome all of you here as we do, do what has become customary now within the St. Lucia Tourist Board of giving an account to the nation of our stewardship and we do it per periodically so that the people of the country can be aware of the developments within the sector and appreciate it because they hear during budget what we is allotted for the marketing of the destination but at this stage we account for how these funds have been spent and let them see what the results actually are. As Mr. Emmanuel actually mentioned, we are very happy with the figures thus far. It has been a challenge sometimes getting to this point, but we are still building on the growth that we have experienced over the past two years. And it, what this does, in, in essence, says that the approach that we've been taking, the strategic approach towards the marketing of the destination, is in fact reaping rewards. So whilst we are giving this, these, these figures here today, we are actually giving kudos to the hardworking staff within the St. Lucia Tourist Board, both within the island and in our various, um, in, in the other um, territories, such as in London, New York, and in the, and the United States generally, in Canada as well, for their efforts, because these efforts have managed to make St. Lucia be top of mind, as they say, within this industry. Um, we are also going to, as well, I hopefully through questioning, we can get onto a number of things which we believe are significant developments within the tourism sector. There are things which we see coming on stream during the latter part of the year and after the director and deputy director give you the information as to the actual successes. We can look towards the vision that we have for the further development of our island and the development of the tourism product within St. Lucia. Thank you. Right. Thank you, Mr. Minister. I now turn over to the Director of Tourism, Mr. <coughs> Lewis, who will give you some of the figures. The Director is a statistician, so he's quite good with figures. If you have any questions about the actual figures and how we tabulate, feel free to ask following the news conference. The Deputy Director will speak a lot about some of the marketing initiatives. Mr. Director, please. Okay. Um, following directly from where the minister um, led us to, I'm happy to report that for the year so far, our arrival figures, particularly stayover arrivals, are up by 5.5%. Um, that is not a figure that came you know, automatically. It's the direct result of the close collaboration that we have employed in working with the Hotel and Tourism Association and some of the other hotel industry partners to arrive at those figures. Um, of particular um, concern for us is the fact that we have been able to maintain that growth in arrivals despite the fact that um, one of our significant properties, at, at least 300 rooms, are out of the market, were out of the market for the month of May. But yet still, in May in particular, we were able to grow by 7.2%. And I think um, while going into to May, we were very concerned that we know we might not have been able to maintain the momentum. I think the, the posting that we have been able to attain really points to the fact that the strategy that we have employed you know, really and truly works. Um, notwithstanding that, the U.S. market, which is our largest 
um, on a year-to-date basis is up by 8.9%, nearly 9%. And um, whenever you have your largest market growing fastest, you know, it really speaks to the, the, the strong demand for the destination. When we compare ourselves with some of the competing um, um, territories within the region, we are doing fairly well. I think we, are, we have surpassed the average growth for the, for the region. Um, there are two countries in particular, Grenada and um, Barbados, who have had a windfall of additional investments in their territories in terms of the number of rooms, and they are growing as well. But when we compare, you know, with all the other, taking all things into consideration, I think we're doing, you know, quite well. In the Canadian market, we are up by another 9%, and um, there are some challenges, you know, going forward. Um, but we expect that, you know, what, what we, the, the efforts that we have employed in the market, really targeting, the, targeting our promotions will continue to yield the sort of results that we've been able to maintain. The Caribbean, on the other hand, um, is a mixed bag. On the one hand, it's, it has been the first, it has been a very, a very good year, 2015, we're up by 21%. The length of stay, on the other hand, has actually shortened, so it's really associated with some of the events that are taking place, holidays in St. Lucia and also holidays in the countries where we do a lot of the marketing. The, the French departments have grown tremendously. That boost that we have seen is really coming from the French departments, largely arrivals by the ferry service. Um, the traditional ferry service that comes into Port Castries, but there are also at least four smaller services that are plying between um, Martinique and Guadeloupe and going into the Rodney Bay Marina that are bringing in significant numbers as well. And we've seen that, you know, that, that trend continuing to, to increase. On the other hand, the UK, which has been our second largest market, is not doing as well. Um, we are down by about 7.8%, but that can be qualified. The, we have had over the comparative period an appreciation of the US dollar, or should I say a depreciation of the pound against the US dollar um, by about 15 to 17%. And what that does is that it actually makes uh, the traditional UK vacation today to the Caribbean region much more expensive. And we are operating a very price sensitive market. So, you know, it's something that we have to keep a very close eye on because the UK market is not only important by virtue of its size, but by virtue of the real economic benefit as it filters for the rest of the region, for the, for the country, sorry. On the other hand, we have the arrivals by, by cruise, and we've seen a 3% increase in additional um, 4,000 people coming in by the, by the cruise, um, by, by the route of cruises. Um, that has been quite good. In 2011, we actually saw a dip in arrivals, but we're now back on a growth path. And some of the collaborations that we have had with some of the cruise companies suggest to us that this year, 2015, will be one of our better years. Um, the number of cruise ships that are planned to call into Port Castries have actually climbed, and this has surpassed anything that we have done in previous years. And it really, you know, um, we expect those numbers to, 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 to increase. Um, yachting arrivals, again, still pointing positive. We have done reasonably well and will continue to do well um, in, the, in that area. We have made the, the entry um, requirements as best as they can be for the time being. And, um, you know, we continue to promote, um, you know, to yacht passengers to, to the destination. Notwithstanding the fact that um, two years ago we implemented two additional transatlantic races that end in St. Lucia in collaboration with World Cruising Club. And, um, you know, our arrivals in that, in that area have continue, uh, are continuing to climb. Um, the interesting fact is, is that in addition to the increases in arrivals, we are seeing the on-island expenditure, or at least the value of business to St. Lucia, is also growing at a faster rate than the increase in arrivals. And that speaks to the quality of the product and a wide range of opportunities for people to engage in activity outside of the hotel plant. Um, it also points out to the fact that for us to maintain that momentum, because at the end of the day, that is the whole purpose for which we're into tourism. For us to maintain that momentum, we have to place close emphasis on the quality of the product. And we have to have a close synergy between what we use on the outside to promote the destination, um, what we encourage and entice people to visit, you know, for them to experience, and to make sure that we can deliver on that on that experience. So the on-island expenditure is increasing. The arrivals are in a, in, a, in a positive you know trend, and I think we are on a on a strong footing going forward. Two other items I just like to mention. One is that in implementing our LF strategy, we are focused on making Saint Lucia easily accessible. Easy by easy accessible, I mean when we 
of when we go into the into the marketplace, we f we find areas where we can lock into a, 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 a healthy bank of visitors. And what you want to do is to make it as seamless as possible between the point of origin and the destination. So in our strategy, we've been able to negotiate direct LF service to St. Lucia from point of origin to the destination. And we are continuing along those lines. So soon from now, you will be seeing an, a, a direct service from Chicago. We currently don't have any direct service from Chicago now, and that has been a strong um, state for us from the U.S. So you will be seeing um, that service initiated in December of this year um, with U.S. Airways. You'll also, United. United, sorry. United. You'll also be seeing, um, yeah, you'll also be seeing additional service coming out of New Jersey, which is a growing market for us in the tri-state area. Um, we'll be seeing an additional service which will make it up to three flights per week to um, visiting St. Lucia. For the past year, we have had two flights being put on by United um, US Airways um, into St. Lucia. So now they're increasing that to a third flight, making it more accessible by, um, you know, for the destination. We are also in the fortunate position where you, um, yes. US Airways is increasing their service to the destination by to six flights per week. Now that has traditionally worked for the winter months, and for the first time we're now going to see it happening for the for the um for the summer months from from um June. from from June right through to August. And again, it really speaks about the 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 demand for the destination. And those flights that I've mentioned are you know initiatives in that have been you know struck between collaboration between the the, the, the um, St. Lucia Tourist Board, the Hotel and Tourism Association, the government of St. Lucia and the airlines, you know, themselves, because the demand for St. Lucia is reasonably strong. It's incumbent upon us now, having gotten to that position, to ensure that those flights work and that the, the, the quality of the product is strong enough to make it a sustainable um, development for us as a destination. We'll now turn across to the Deputy Director of Tourism, as you heard, the marketing aspect for us is pretty, pretty wide. We have quite an extensive machinery on island, but of course the tentacles are far and wide. The U.S., the U.K., and further field in Europe, Canada, of course, and the Caribbean. Deputy Director Tracy Warner. Thanks. Good morning, everyone. So I will start. Um, overall, our marketing effort is wide. It's vast. So I'm just going to give a couple of highlights of some of the critical things that we do. And I'll start with this weekend that just passed where we hosted 27 of our top selling travel agents from North America. And these travel agents have sold in excess of 2.7 million US dollars um, to St. Lucia in 2014. So we have an ongoing program where we um, take the travel agents and just to say that the travel agents are still very, very critical um, in the entire travel business and very important to St. Lucia and we do direct um, a good portion of our marketing efforts towards the travel agents so that they can know St. Lucia and become, um, you know, develop an affinity for St. Lucia. And this is one such program that we have ongoing. To become a St. Lucia specialist, you have to go through a series of steps, um, learn about the destination, attend a fan trip, etc. a number of steps. And we incentivize each month our top selling agents in the regions. And so it culminates in this ceremony in St. Lucia that we brought 27 of our top selling agents. So they, we recognize and reward them and it gives them incentive to keep selling St. Lucia, keep selling the destination. And then they get to see St. Lucia again, see different aspects of the destination so that their education they can support and sell St. Lucia to their clients. So that is a major campaign that's ongoing, our Piton Award Incentive Scheme. Um, we also have the wedding symposium coming up. It'll be our third annual wedding symposium. This again is targeted to the travel agents, but the travel agents that specifically sell destination weddings. And the destination weddings are important for St. Lucia. It's important for us to grow this market because on average, a destination wedding is about 30,000 US dollars spent. So that contribution to um, St. Lucia could be tremendous to the photographer, the hairstylist, the florist, many aspects versus just a standard honeymoon or destination. And that as well is very important. The honeymoons and so on are all very important. But the, the destination weddings, we really need to grow that and that is one of our focuses for, the, for this year. We are also expanding the diaspora program. It launched in March into April this year, and it's a gradual process of expanding into various regions. We are now expanding into Texas and Maryland, getting the word out about the diaspora program, where we encourage our St. Lucians living abroad and in our key markets to assist us in selling the destination. 
not to assist us in a manner that they feel comfortable with. A lot of them do it naturally in their work environment and so on. They tell people about their destination, but we're really now giving them the tools to understand St. Lucia as a vacation destination and to be able to sell, to know the different types of properties, to know the different niches that we target, etc. So that is ongoing as well. We launched at the beginning of the year our summer rocks our St. Lucia Rocks this summer campaign. And summer is an important period for us because it is generally a low period and we need to drive business during that time period because you know, winter obviously is cold so we get that um, you know, automatic market. So we have to find ways to make St. Lucia attractive to the family market because that's who travels during the summer. So we're showcasing St. Lucia as all the things to do, what benefits kids and so on. We've been running that from February and we're still running it now because you know, we can take advantage of last minute bookings as well. I want to highlight the digital marketing that we do because that is absolutely critical. We've taken an always-on approach to digital marketing. Um, that is where everybody is. Everybody is online. So if you want to capture people and through this medium we're able to target people at all stages of the planning process for taking a vacation. When they're just thinking about where they potentially want to go, where they're deciding what hotel they want to stay at, where they're looking at the things to do when they go on vacation. All of that, we need to be there in the right time, in the right place to all the different markets. So while we're advertising Summer Rocks, we're advertising St. Lucia Jazz, we're advertising to families, we're advertising to um, wedding couples. So we have multiple um, ads taking place online on various platforms. So whether it is through our um, video on YouTube, Google AdWords and Display, our Facebook advertising, and also targeting specific sites like brides.com, um, mywedding.com, that's how we're able to simultaneously um, reach all of these markets. And of course, uh, you know, it's much more cost effective than the major print and the major um, advertising medium. So that has been a major focus this year and that will certainly continue on throughout the year so that we can afford to always be out in the marketplace. Um, a print, we do our standard print advertising. You can't really give that up because people are still doing a bit of print in the marketplace so we do have quite a bit of advertising and this is where we partner with our hotels. They're very supportive of, um, of the print um, advertising in key publications so we work together. They have significant budgets, they're selling their property and so when we come together it really gives us um, greater bang for our buck when we cooperate with the hoteliers. We've been running as well a series of radio promotions across the, um, North America and that was very successful for us last year. We were able to target the key cities that have the direct service and that we're building or if we're leading up to new service we've been able to do that and that is continuing on this year. We have the new Chicago service that will be coming on. That's a new market as the director indicated and we must really um, be in that market effectively to drive that business and ensure that that flight is successful. So we'll be doing a, an entire blitz and um, in support and to um, create awareness of St. Lucia. There is quite a bit of awareness in that market already. The challenge has always been getting to St. Lucia from Chicago, you know, an overnight or a stop. So now it makes it that much more accessible and we just need to be out there to let everybody know that the flight is happening. So that, in a nutshell, I mean, our focus, our special markets, we have our eye on and we, we're out in the marketplace in the cruise area, in yachting, in terms of attending the key trade shows so that people um, know that we're there and understand what we have to offer. Our small properties, we've developed the brand, the Gems of St. Lucia, and that's pulling all of the small properties together under this umbrella brand that we can now promote. We'll be developing a, a microsite for them um, so that we can give them the awareness that sometimes they have a challenge in doing for themselves. So we're pulling all of them together. They have collectively agreed on this brand, and so uh, it's just now getting the whole packaging together and putting that out in the marketplace. Our, our health and wellness, our culinary, um, Chef Nina is back on with us and we're very pleased about that. Um, she, we're giving her a little bit of a break because she's just opened her new restaurant. Um, so once that's kind of gotten underway, we'll have a series of activities in the marketplace because um, she was excellent for St. Lucia last year. Um, we got a lot of exposure. The media were very attracted to her in all of the markets that we went to. And so St. Lucia got tremendous exposure. We plan on doing a series of videos, short clips on St. Lucia different aspects of St. Lucia from a culinary perspective of course that we can feed out on um, YouTube and so having that material online really helps us um, showcase St. Lucia differently and utilizing Chef Nina. 
So those are some of the key things that we are working on. The one thing that we are launching, and for us this is, it's, it is a huge deal, is our new website, and it will be about August or September. I mean, your website is the hub of every single thing that that we do, every marketing thing that we do. So it, it, you know, the time, you know, really has come for us to get it to the level that it needs to be. So we're very excited. We've been working since um, January on it because it, it's multifaceted for sure. There's so many um, components of it, as you would imagine with all the niches and all the different things that we have to do, the different properties, etc. You have to showcase the destination adequately and give people the kind of information that they want um, in a user-friendly manner. So um, all of that is happening now. Um, there will be a wedding portal. The Gems of St. Lucia will have their own microsite. The Diaspora program will have its own microsite. And the MICE, which is Meetings, Incentives, Conference, and Events, um, is another whole category that we're trying to push this year. We don't have huge convention centers, but we have a lot of incentive groups that come to St. Lucia. We can do medium-sized conferences, and we do do medium-sized conferences. So that is a good market that um, you know has potential to drive business, and not just during the peak periods. So that will have its own portal as well, and that will be something that we'll be pushing throughout the year. So just in a quick nutshell, I mean, it, there's so much more, but I just give you a few snippets of, of what we do. So if, if at any time anybody wants any additional information, I can certainly provide that. Yeah. So this has been generally the performance on the industry. As I say, we'll deal with the question in just a little while. There's one other burning issue, that of <coughs> St. Lucia Jazz and Arts, the review for 2015, Director of Tourism, Louis Lewis, again. Okay, um, I want to start by saying that from all the metrics that we have established, the Senusha Jazz and Arts Festival for 2015 was a very successful one. And I say successful by, on a, from a number of perspectives. Um, the first one is that when we checked the arrivals and we did a very specific, um, we, put, we implemented a very specific strategy for counting um, the arrivals coming in. We were we registered about 3,800 people coming in this year compared to about 2,600 um, in 2014. So at least at that basic level, you know, it, it, it achieved the objectives. Um, the second thing is that we looked at ticket sales. Um, ticket sales this year was $1.6 million and last year it was $1.4 million. Having said so, um, we did indeed sell less tickets. We, sell, we sold about 19,000 tickets um, this year compared with about 20,000 in the previous year. And what really made that significant difference was the attendance at the opening. Um, the opening in 2014, despite the rain, I think we just had that right formula. And, um, you know, people really came out in strong numbers for it. So, you know, that actually edged the numbers up. Um, over and above that, in this year's festival, we had a number of new features. And where, what we focused on this year, which was very different, was on the capacity building towards sustainability at the festival. So you had a number of um, educational workshops. There was an educational workshop with the, the students at the School of Music and some of the budding musicians that we have. Um, three of the artists, the straight ahead jazz performers, um, who um, Joey Francesco, and I hope I have the name correct, and yeah, De Francesco, right? <laughs> and um, and the other the other one at the cultural center, uh, to, yeah, as well as a tiro tapping, worked with the school of music and the students really to expose them to that high level of performance, you know, to encourage them to you know to apply their their craft as they go forward. Um, you also had for the first time an exchange between the 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 well a culinary ex experience, the exchange between the the chefs at Jade Mountain. And some of the, our budding, you know, um, chefs at the schools, especially particularly in Soufre, and there was that interaction with them. So they had that, you know, um, that, that collaboration taking place. Um, we also had a dance workshop with a lot of the students at secondary schools, where, where wherever they were dance troops. You had a representative from the Norman Manley School of 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 of, of dance from Jamaica who was here in St. Lucia for a little over a week and engaging all of the different, um, you know, um, dance troops with the, you know, with, with, with that level of um, external professional assistance. And Hot Coteo, on the other hand, had an interesting collaboration with the, the, the a Cuban contingent, Ati Moda, and um, they really depicted fashion from an art perspective and complemented the, the, the work of the other local models that we had um, at, the, at the show. Um, the attendance at the, at the shows, as I said, you know, um, Friday was, Friday, the Friday performance at 
the Pigeon Island was higher than we had ever had, you know, before. Saturday, which is a traditional dip, um, the numbers were not as strong as before, but then Sunday, you know, compensated with, you know, with a, for another strong performance. One of the things that we've been aiming at is really to get the country to embrace the festival, and I think we have far, um, you know, surpassed what our initial expectations were. We saw some new events, some new venues coming on stream with um, Grand Riviere putting on a show. Um, you had Marigo Bay as well putting on, you know, um, uh, you know, show for the first time. We saw the expansion and the consolidation taking place at Moshi with Moshi Jazz that now become a staple. Um, Soufre, you know, really expanded their performance with a, with a, with a great number um, this year. And, you know, we saw strong performances from the traditional ones. Um, we are now seeing events emerging post the main events at Pigeon Island with the Go Movement in Viewfort putting on a, tr a tremendous show at, at, the, at the end and some of the other capacity building workshops um, you know, really extended beyond the, the, the main show days. Um, art in itself, with the feature of the feature of the of of, of um, the the visual arts um, this year, I think was better than in previous years. But I dare say that we are still very far from where we would like to be in an ideal world to have a greater depiction of our visual arts, you know, on display during the Jazz and Arts Festival. So I think we've made some tremendous progress in this year's. Um, events and um, you know we have already um, started the, the planning despite the fact that you know the uh, a new entity will be taking over the, the mantle of you know hosting the, the jazz festival but because the planning is a continuous exercise we are in the transitionary mode you know in terms of preparation and you know when that entity is established you know we will pass on everything. Um, I think that's it in a general nutshell from the Jazz and Arts Festival and I'm sure, you know, you may have some greater inquiries. All right. Um, so now, I know Minister had some other points he wanted to bring up, but that would, I think will come up during our question and answer um, session. We have just about another half hour for the question and answer session. Um, you can indicate your willingness by raising your hand. I will call you. And, of course, the head table will address your concern. Rani, please. Good morning. Good yes, um, the cost of travel, uh, airline travel, Is the ministry or what is the ministry doing to maybe look at alternative uh, means of travel, for example, uh, like you mentioned, ferry boats, I was mentioned here. What is the ministry doing to maybe try to uh, develop that? Yeah, well, that, that is an ongoing dialogue. Um, in fact, within another two weeks, I'm supposed to be attending the OECS Tourism Minister's meeting in Grenada. And one of the items which is down for discussion is something which we had tried to initiate two years ago, um, whereby we had asked for the um, central bank actually was going to present us a paper on the feasibility of, of regional travel through the use of ferries. And I mean, this is a topic Topic which has been kicked around for some time. There have been a number of shortcomings in terms of one, the determination of the proper craft, um, fueling, base, a number of things have come up. But we believe that it, they, we have seen, for example, in the development between St. Lucia and Martinique, we have seen how important the use of ferries can be in terms of increasing numbers. And we're hoping that we could utilize the same in terms of the development of interregional travel. Um, well, one of the things that, you know, that, that are extending from that, although it's not directly linked to the ferry service, um, you note that the director made a point that we have noted that regional travel seems to surround now maybe small conferences and surrounding events. So you would have seen a greater influx of events which you are being staged in the island and in a few months you're going to hear about Mercury which was on before the Mercury event is going to be done again in collaboration with the St. Lucia Tourist Board so we have had a greater emphasis on marketing especially within Martinique Martinique, Trinidad um, to some extent um, some of our other places like maybe Barbados and one of them as well because we have seen that surrounding uh, surrounding events we can manage to increase the numbers that would travel from the region even though the cost of travel is still high. Let's do general ladies, we'll start coming to in a while. Um, with the new festival commissions coming on board, with being tourist boards last year um, during the jazz festival, seeing that you have the most experience, I would say, will there be members, representatives from the tourist board bringing 
But it, it, it's not going to be an automatic deposit of everything into the hands of the Festivals Commission because, as you can well appreciate, we're going into what is going to be a 25th year for the Jazz Festival, what is now Jazz and Arts Festival, and it is supposed to be a historic year for us. So whilst the Festivals Commission uh, is mandated to take over the executive production of a number of events island-wide and beyond Jazz Carnival, La Rose, La Marguerite, um, Creole months and, and everything else like that, there is going to be a, a transition into their subsuming the responsibility for the Jazz and Arts Festival. So a lot of responsibility is still going to fall on the shoulders of the St. Lucia Tourist Board as we ensure that our 25th anniversary is going to be a good one. So there is going to be a collaboration between the Festivals Commission and the St. Lucia Tourist Board to ensure that the production of our 25th year is an excellent one. Well, then again, the, the question of timing is one that we can always debate. It's like saying tomatoes or tomatoes. Um, we don't. But in, at the end of the day, it is the mandate of the Festivals Commission goes beyond just the production of jazz and arts. It goes towards the production of all national events. So whilst I'm indicating that jazz, which has been a huge calendar event for St. Lucia for the past 25 years, it is not going to be, as I said, just a question of depositing in the hands of the Festivals Commission. The Tourist Board is going to have a vital role to play to ensure that the 25th year is going to be a bumper one and the Festivals Commission are going to have to learn from the experience that has been gathered over the past 25 years in the production of the Jazz and Arts Festival in all components of it. To the Nicholas. Um, I have two questions. My first one is directed at the Minister. Um, my concern is Basically, when are we going to start taking a holistic and realistic review of cash trees, the city, which in my view is a total dump? When are we going to be honest about what is going on in cash trees from the arrival of cruise ships? Um, now there's talk of some of the cruise ships wanting to have overnight calls in, in port cash trees. Over the years, we've been hearing about all different kinds of task force, and but I think we've glossed over what is happening in Castries, the city, and we've not um, taken a, a realistic review of Castries and what can be done to elevate, um, eliminate, sorry, some of the problems going mm -hmm. on in Castries mm -hmm. as a port destination. Okay, I, I can I can answer that up front. Um, one of the things that we do um, in terms of, of assessing um, St. Lucia and our performances, especially in cruise, there's an uh, there's a survey which is done on on the on on the ships whereby you have the visitor perceptions before they get to the destination, the visitor perceptions thereafter, so that we can see the areas where we fall short. And we have, we have realized that sometimes visitor um, perception of the destination, there's a, a disparity between visitor perception before they get to the destination and their, what, what they actually um, enjoy when they get to the destination. They comment on cleanliness, they comment on a number of other things. The... the, the Desire to do it has always been there, but it has taken a lot longer than I think ought actually should have been done. Um, it should have taken to actually um, realize the changes that need to take place. You would have heard from Slasper, amongst others, that we are moving speedily into ensuring that the complex, the demolition, and the getting into the preparation of the the, the, the Jeremy Street complex is we're moving full steam ahead with that. What this does is it enables us to have a facility which is not just a sanitized facility but a facility which is on par with some of the better ones not just within, within and without the region. This is so as to ensure that the we change the one the initial perceptions and the visitor experience from the time they get off the vessels so that their shopping and other experiences can be a lot more more controlled to some extent. There are other critical things that need to be done and it is, it is and I mean the, the Castry City Council have to play a vital role and our citizens in terms of ensuring that our, our, our city is, 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 how do I, I want to put, use the right words, that, that our city reflects a city that, that we would like to be, to, demo, to, to be proud of and to exhibit. I mean, Castries has had its challenges, and the city council 
are now working through the various challenges that they have so as to ensure that one the city is as clean as it ought to be one secondly that you know we can have a transformational plan for the city because the the city i mean i think um needs to be restored to a certain level of prominence it's it has gradually it has gradually diminished in that regard and i know for a fact that these are on stream even though i don't sit with the grouping associated with the Castry City Council, but we have a vital input on it because one of the main sources for us, where most of our tourists end up walking into, is the city. So we have to be concerned about a number of things, the level of crime, and amongst others. Yeah. Well, my second question is directed mm -hmm. at um, the director. Um, I recognize that you sort of glossed over, and that's my words, not yours, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Um, when it came to the expense um, the spend. Yeah. Um, you sp you were specific about the figures, the arrivals, and whatnot. Um, but in recent times, you know, we've been hearing about the numbers increasing, but there have not been a clear analysis as to the visitor spend and um, what that means in terms of real dollars and cents. Because they have to the average person, what they really want to hear is about real dollars and cents. What this means to the economy, and we have not been getting any clear figures where that is concerned. You can share some light on that? Okay. Yeah, no, I, I, I would like to share um, a lot of light on it. Thank you. Um, <laughs> yeah, you see, the, the, I have to be very careful when we, when we talk about the expenditure because that is the only set of data that is done by estimates. Um, and it's not, it's, not, it's not an exact science. It's really um, measuring people's reports on how much they spend and actually taking you know, an average of, the, of those things. Um, let me tell you why th those numbers are, have actually been increasing, and I'll, I'll get on to the, a bit of granular detail. Um, there are a number of properties, the higher end properties are the ones that are increasing, are growing at a faster rate. The smaller properties are remaining static, and in some cases there's just one little group that we did a specific program with, um, a group of, of um, 20 properties I, I believe it was. Um, that we work very closely with in conjunction with the Ministry of Tourism, looking at some of the, the standards on the product side, um, the Hotel and Tourism Association assisting with some of the, some of the, um, the, the training, and we also working with them on some of the marketing. And what we saw from coming to that group, that group of about 20 properties, we saw an increase of about 37% in the, in the average numbers. And 37% in tourism statistics is a big number from when you look at one year to the next. Getting back to the, the specific point of the, um, the expenditure, because your higher end properties are actually increasing and they, they have average occupancies in the upper 80s and sometimes 90s percent you know, occupancy level, despite all of that seasonality that you're seeing, it's a higher spending traveler that is coming into the destination. And the, while we see the arrivals figures going up by about 5.5% overall, the expenditure is about 15% more because you have the greater increase happening at the higher end. Um, the expenditure data does not take into consideration FS. It takes into consideration only expenditure as it relates to the on-island. So you'll see the accommodation component, tours and attractions, um, souvenirs, you know, entertainment and that sort of thing. The disturbing area, or I, I don't want to use disturbing because I don't want to sound alarmist. Um, the unfortunate category within that whole breakdown of expenditure is what's spent on entertainment, is what's spent on um, souvenirs because we have limitations in those areas. It also points to the fact that we have tremendous potential to in, for growth in those areas because we have people who are coming who are willing to spend but have not had or do not have sufficient opportunities to engage in that expenditure. Um, so on every metric, the accommodation component is about 80%. You know, so people come, they stay in the rooms or they pay for the rooms and they have meals and drinks at the hotels. Um, the one that tells us when, where, where we actually make, whether we are actually making gains is the level of expenditure that takes place outside of the hotel plant. The unfortunate thing is that that number is, well, it's, on the one hand, it is growing, but on the other hand, it is still less than 10%. So, you know, again, it, present, it shows us an indication of an opportunity, an economic opportunity that exists for us to get the people out of the hotel and get them to purchase more local items, take more tours and, you know, and, you know visit more 
you know, sites and attractions. Having said all of that, um, in terms of an up overall number for up to the end of the first quarter, and, be, and that because that number is done by survey and it's a bit delayed, up to the end of the first quarter, we are looking at anywhere in the range of about 300 and something million dollars, uh, 350 something million dollars in terms of the value of that business to the destination. What is that compared to the first quarter of 2014? If you well, then you just take off something like 15 percent, which according to my mathematics would take me down to something like close to 300 and. 10 or so. Yeah, just yeah. about 12. Yeah, yeah, 12 or so. Yeah. Yes, go ahead, Reggie. Let's still elaborate on that point. Um, talk about um, on island expenditure. I know the um, SLH, the executive director, has some qualms when he said that um, you know, the increase in expenditure does not reflect an increase in revenue. Mm -hmm. Would there be any um, any initiative to to really get like you see the outside the hotel, outside of the hotel like we have the vendors the vendors arcade mm -hmm. the cruise ship come you know, there's never a steel band there's never a little no, you know, something to attract something from the ordinary something you know in terms of marketing to help you know get these people more involved in something not, not other than the regular day to day activity. What has happened actually is that through the National Performance Program, which, which emanates from the, the Ministry of Tourism, what we do is that we have at selected venues, we, lo we, we look at opportune times when we have a number of cruise ships in port and we set up performance venues in different parts of the island so as to ensure that one, we propel um, local artists who probably would not have had the opportunity otherwise to perform for that sort of captive audience, but also bring a sense of entertainment and variety to a number of areas. Um, because uh, as with everything else, we're restrained by budget. It's a, it's a rotating program which we bring to different parts of the island. So. At different intervals, they may be at 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 in in Castries, in the Castries area. They may be in Viewfort at a, at certain other other sites, or they could be at um, Point Seraphine or different locations. So it is something that we have to grow on, because um, with the changes that are going to be coming to the the Jeremy Street area, okay, in recent months, there, there is going to be a total transformation. And the when the the final plans. Are, are displayed, you will see that there are within those plans, it's supposed to be within the scope of those plans, performance venues within that area so that they, the tourists who do not wish probably to even walk into the city, those who want to just chill and use their Wi-Fi, can have, be entertained in a number of different areas whilst within the Jeremy Street complex. So that is Yes, it's 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 part of it's part of the changes, and you see, we're hoping that coming out of the national performance program, we can develop what we think is a, a good core or crop of artists who we can have as go-to people regularly, you know, so that any time that we need snap performances, we we have a bumper day with cruise ships in port, we can pull in artists from Viewfort, Choiselle, Labrie, or wherever they are, and have a comprehensive set of performances, and that is going to be even more important as we have ships leaving port even later and um, we're trying to see what we can do to ensure that the ships leave port a lot later there's some announcements that we hopefully going to make within another two months which the cruise ships which the sector are going to find very very impressive which will encourage them to stay in port a lot later so that enables us to develop more um, activities surrounding these ships being in port which in essence will lead which should lead to more revenue being spent within the destination Go ahead, Stan. Stan Bishop. Um, sure. Mm -hmm. I guess since we try to market outside of the island, mm -hmm. we don't really market within the island. Mm -hmm. um, you, there's some way that the SLHDA, the SMTD, can team up with private sector entities to put up billboards across this island, especially when you come into the airport, both airports. I get this distinct feeling that this thing, this bland welcome, is going to be continued for years again. I mean, you're leaving the departure lounge for Trinidad, you get up the step, and you see this huge pan, pan man, made out of steel bands. Mm -hmm. And that reminds you that you're leaving Trinidad, mm -hmm. and you're leaving. We need to be able to come up with comprehensive and attractive 
approaches to welcoming people, welcoming people. Mm -hmm. There are no billboards at, at um, GFL Charles. Hmm. There's a billboard at both airports. Yeah. yeah. We have a billboard at both airports. Billboards. Mm -hmm. yeah. We yeah. have one at each. Yeah. That's within Upon the arrival. Mm -hmm. Within the airport. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about outside of the airport. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you, go, you go along your route. Can I ask you, Stan? Stan, we want... No, Stan, no, no. I'm, want, talking we want. About, yeah. I'm talking about advertising mm -hmm. your island to your own people, that you want to want them to be part of the state issue. When the tourists come here, they want to okay. be going through the island and being reminded that they're in St. Lucia. Mm -hmm. We, we, we're looking at something. It's not exactly what you're saying, but through you know the, the, the program that we have with Art in Public Spaces, yeah. you'll realize that we're doing a lot more work through the Creative Industries Ministry. We're doing a lot of work so that we can have artistic impressions and presentations all over the island. Hopefully with the um, sculpture, scu um, the sculpture Park coming on stream. We, can, we want to turn, try to transform the vision. It's a long one. It may be long beyond my time of turning the entire island into what we believe is a creative space. So that in different parts of the island, you would have something that you could go to. Every point that you get to, you'll see there's something unique and creative that is on display about St. Lucia. And I believe which is nicer than, than the billboards, having billboards, because the natural scenery is there for everybody to see. Don't discount staycation. That is promoting to yeah. our, we spend a lot of money to promote um, our local properties to St. Lucians and it actually works very well and a lot of the, like the smaller businesses do um, benefit from the staycation promotion that's radio TV um, print that we do and it'll be starting shortly that should be starting at the end of June to promote um, staycation runs right through to September end of September CPL starts in about a week I want people to come here and find out that they're in the home of Darren Sam you get what I'm saying? I do. Yeah, like you yeah. get yeah. a feeling when you go to Ghana, you get that you go home and someone and you can ball. That's the kind of thing I'm talking about, that people must be reminded. Mm -hmm. So if they didn't know, they'd find out that, Ooh, welcome to the home of Darren Sam. Hey, that man is from here. That's the kind of feeling you want. You want to build that kind of, mm -hmm. you get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah. through public-private yeah. sector. Yeah. 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 What's the question for me on, on sure. jazz? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I guess everyone on the head table knows that's one of my favorite subjects. Mm -hmm. um, I never want to be and easily arts, arts. satisfied. I think overall this year I was pleasantly satisfied for generally. Can we have that again? Sorry, one more time. I know. Um, but just an observation. Um, I just want from basically anyone on the head table, just basically, what's the, what has the feedback been like? for the different layout at Pigeon Island. Um, just for me, the, on the Friday evening, it was sort of a long, lonely walk, like going around, right? On the Saturday and Sunday, I think it worked a little better, the fact that you had activities happening along the way, so it didn't, it didn't feel that way. But on the, on the Friday night, I was a little concerned about that. It seemed longer than it, it, mm -hmm. yeah. it was actually. So I just want from you guys what some of the changes that you implemented this year. What has been the, the feedback? feedback? I've just again hearing from some persons. Um, I'm not too sure if it was a question of familiar, familiarity in terms of where you had um, the, the food area. And, area. and I got some feedback where that is concerned. So yeah. what have you guys well, been hearing? Let, let me give you some feedback. A lot of it was, um, was, was, was mixed. And maybe I can give you some of the criticisms that we got. And I'll tell you how we plan if we are doing it next year, how we plan to address it. Um, the whole concept of having a different entrance, well, what started, it emanates from the fact that you had a, a, a new configuration for this stage to give you a wider viewing area. It worked reasonably well, but there are areas where we could improve on it because um, the line of sight from all the all areas on the ground didn't work very well, especially if you had anybody who was five feet tall standing yeah, at the edge. Yes, yeah, it was too low. Yeah. And we didn't want to raise, <laughs> and we would not want to raise it in its current position, you know, just going vertical, because the infrastructure requirements, the engineering at the back would be a little challenging, you know, from a pure, you know, safety perspective. So what we plan to do is to bring the stage a little higher up, and you still have a very wide expanse. Um, the front of house equipment, and the engineers tell me that you need to be in directly in front of the stage so you get all the proper feedback and things. So the footprint of that infrastructure was too wide, and it, it, it compromised, you know, visitor viewability. So we're going to adjust it to have it narrower and probably go higher. Um, because we changed the stage, 
they work to come in. We wanted to create the sense of arrival, so it, out of necessity, it, it, it entailed a longer walk. But um, sufficient number of people complained about it that we had to rethink it so that next year you will not be seeing that, you know, that long walk. Although, um, interestingly, what we could do, if all of the plywood that we had there to demarcate the area, it can become a platform for visual yeah, arts display. You can get some art troops, different schools to come and compete and put something, you know, on that area. There. But, of course, we'll change the configuration because that does not change the length of the walk, you know, which you, you rightfully, you know, mentioned to, you know, um, to get there. Where we, where we put the concessioners, um, the whole idea was to try to create an area where you could still have that fantastic backdrop, but it did not work very well. People complained about the bar or the, the service area being too high from the ground. Um, we tried to make them larger for a little more accommodation of the actual um, vendors. That worked well, but it didn't sit well with the patrons who were actually paying for the service. So we have to move them around. The press area was, to some extent, the, um, in direct view of the back of the house of those concessionary mm -hmm. areas. Yeah. So it now causes us to want to rethink and put it in a different location yeah. so that you can have the sort of tranquility or close to tranquility so you can you know, conduct your interviews without the disturbance of the, the, the back of stage um, you know, sounds mm -hmm. and also the, you know, the fumes from the concessionaires as well. So we had to do a reconfiguration you know, of that. Um, by, by itself. So you see, we've taken the feedback on and we've already started thinking of how we can reconfigure the, um, you know, the whole venue to accommodate some levels of improvement. We were not happy with the fencing. Or, of course, on a Friday, it, it, I mean, if I may be critical, it looked like a bit of a farm, um, you know, with the fencing. So we've, we've decided that that is not going to be part of the whole arrangement. And we thought that there's a little too much plywood, and we have challenged ourselves to find a way in which we could create a sterile area for the backstage, but not have such visible construction material. So in all 2016, really should be you know, a better event than, than 2015, despite all the improvements that we saw. And I'm very pleasant. I was also very, very pleasantly surprised when I saw your feedback. <laughs> yeah. um, there's been a decline in UK um, arrivals in St. Lucia. Is there any reason why um, UK radio is not being targeted as you've done so with US radio? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Tracy, you want to address that or you want to? Uh, we do do. Um, it is extremely um, expensive in the UK, on the UK side. So our focus has been a lot, again, on the digital marketing. Working, the UK market is extremely tour operator driven. So we do a lot of work with our tour operators in terms of campaigns. We do outdoor billboard, tube advertising, like in the subways. And so, so we do a lot more of that. And it's in collaboration with our partners. So like um, Virgin Atlantic, um, British Airways Holidays, and these, these big who have money to match with ours. So we do get um, big bang for our, our buck, and it, the view has been that some of these areas, outdoor marketing, the digital, are more effective than the radio. And so hence, that's why we do. And can I yeah. ask which uh, media you represent? Is that OK? Stop. You're the star. Oh, okay. I thought you were just figure it out, John. No, no, no. no, 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 no. Yeah. With all the figures yeah. flying around, yeah. not figuring out anything else. Yeah. 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 Nice having you nonetheless. Yeah. Yeah. Any other question? Um, Riani, as we get ready to close down. Carnival is, of course, an indigenous festival. Of course, mm -hmm. the topic has always been back and forth about trying to get carnival or make carnival on par with the jazz and arts. Um, we, we're, we're hearing about a new festival commission. How, or, or what, what would be, how, what, what's the strategy going forward to try to get carnival mm -hmm. on the same level of jazz, if that's at all possible? Well, I always like to create the distinction between carnival and jazz. Okay, they're two separate. They're two separate events. They have, um, for for reasons that we all know. For example, to bring in artists, the artists that we bring in for the jazz and arts festival will obviously cost us sums that far exceed the budget that we get for the production of carnival. So it's chalk and cheese in that regard. And for those people who keep on bringing this thing up every year about the cost versus jazz, I mean. It's something we've explained so many times that I hope not to have to go into it again. And I think it's, it's, it's logical. What we have to do now in relation to Carnival is we, we, are, we are attempting as best as possible to ensure that the standards concerning our Carnival are significant enough to bring in the relative returns. Okay? 
Carnival has to be more than a local buy-in. We are, we are now ensuring that Carnival is marketed through the tourist board significantly. We're getting a huge buy-in from the French, French ter our neighboring French territories, from Trinidad, Barbados, and to a smaller extent, St. Vincent, in relation to Carnival. What has to happen now, and the stakeholder, the CPMA, is in fact has worked very hard in, in terms of ensuring that the production of the event is better than it was before. The, the launching of the event has been well in advance of it was before, to the point where we see bands are prepared to show their offerings from as early as January. So it means that there has been a buy-in. But we have to ensure, and the various stakeholders, and it's about time they take responsibility for the quality of the product that they put out there. Because for it to improve, not only must the government inject resources, not only must the tourist board go out there and market, but what we invest in as a government and what the tourist board goes out there and markets must be of a standard that is going to enable the numbers to come into the island. I, if I can be critical, if I can be critical, and I'm being critical not just from the perspective of being a minister, but being an avid supporter of the art, especially Calypso. And despite the investment that we have seen, we still see dwindling numbers at the tents. And, and, and why is that so? Is it because of the lack of investment when this year the investment is exactly what we asked for? Is it because of the, the lack of injection on the part of the tourist board? No, it's not. So let us focus on what we think the key problems are. It's not a question of now trying to cast blame all over the place because at the end of the day, we need to focus on improving the product because it's beneficial to all of us. Any more questions? I think we're closing it down. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks so much for coming. There's some light refreshments that we can all be party to. And keep in mind, we are soon heading out for the activity in the south for the culinary community. So man, you good? Yes, let me pass you, let me pass you. Let me pass you. Yeah. 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 Yeah.